Since 1983, the TH Marine BFL All-American has represented the ultimate goal for thousands of anglers across the nation. And while the All-American, much like the sport itself, has evolved over the past three decades, one thing has remained constant, the thrill of victory. Anglers claim victory over not only the competition, but over history, as previous All-American champions have gone on to etch their names into bass fishing legend. Seven pounds, nine ounces, your champion is Jacob Wheeler. Your BFL All-American champion, Troy Morrow. Your champion is Clark Wheeler. This year, a new page of history will be written, a new champion will be crowned, and a new legend will begin. It's the 2017 TH Marine BFL All-American. Ninety-eight anglers have come to Pickwick Lake in Florence, Alabama, and the quest to become the next All-American champion is underway. Whether it's on the boater or co-angler side, the stakes are high. This is a great event. You know, there's like 40,000 people try to accomplish this to get to the All-American. You know, just to get here is quite a feat. It was a goal in my life. This is the first one. I have enjoyed it. Been well ran, well taken care of. Uh, you couldn't ask for nothing no better. While the hospitality is more than you can ask for, the competition is as tough as you could ever imagine. As we start our coverage on day two of this three-day championship, there's a clear indication of what it's going to take for someone to win this thing. Mike Brigan is starting the day in second place. He's a well-known stick up in Wisconsin, but has little experience here on Pickwick. I'm pretty green on the Tennessee River in the summertime, so everything's a little bit of a struggle, but I think I got a handle on some of it. I'm gonna fish all day deep with a cast egg and a scrounger and a spoon and whatever I get my first two bites on, I'm gonna keep throwing it. The TH Marine Bass Fishing League is made up of 24 divisions across the country. The top 45 in points, along with the five division winners, compete in one of six regional qualifiers. And the top six boaters and co-anglers in those events earn a slot in the All-American. In addition, the TBF National Championship sends the top qualifiers from their seven divisions. Here we go, it is seven o'clock. The full field competes in the first two days, while only 10 boaters and 10 co-anglers fish on the third and final day, with the cumulative weight determining the winner. It's just a drop. There's a little old point that sticks out there. I usually catch a good one or two here every day. I, I checked it a couple of times in pre-practice, and we always caught a a big one. I checked it the first day of practice, made one cast and caught a big one, but I caught two of my bigger ones here yesterday. Pickwick Lake is famous for its ledge fishing, and most of these anglers are searching for schools of bass piled up in their summertime hangouts. Tournament leader Marshall Deacons is fishing in his first All-American, and he's keeping it simple, throwing a jig. No, I just, that jig's just rolling down through there with the current. And, I guess they're, they're sitting there behind something or in those rocks. And when that jig comes rolling by there, they can't help herself. Here he comes. Good job. <laughs> I can catch one with a camera boat in there. <laughs> Marshall's off to a good start this morning, and while he puts this beauty in the live well, let's take a quick look at the lake. 
Pickwick Lake is the second to last in a chain of impoundments along the Tennessee River as it makes its way through Tennessee and Alabama before forming the awesomeness known as Kentucky Lake. Mike Brugan, who fishes the Mississippi River up in La Crosse, is sticking to places where he located some schools of fish during the practice period. I don't have a strategy. I was here for a week. I found six or seven spots I liked and I'm going to fish them. I probably need 13 or 14 to get in the top 10 tomorrow, but that'll put me out of a chance to win, so I need a lot. It's hard to stay calm. But you have to, fishing this deep, you gotta be so precise. Probably about 17 feet of water. I'd imagine they're coming out of this creek, but it ain't a, it ain't a lot different than anything around it. There's just some fish on it. I, I left here with four yesterday, two nice ones. Nah. Biggin, biggin. Yeah, just keep her. Get him off. Little keeper. Get it started. Out here on these ledges, you know, and everything. I knew how this was going. This was definitely going to house going to be one. So, uh, you know, to to make it to this tournament, you know, is something to be said all by its own. But if you get here, you might as well try and win it, you know, rather than just just finish, uh, you know, in the middle of the pack or something. There's no doubt there's some guys catching them off the bank, and some of the guys had some pretty strong limits yesterday. But, uh, you know, they would drop that water another three quarters of a foot last night. And so uh, that might that might stagger them boys up just a little bit. But uh, we don't get to fish this way back home, and I enjoy fishing this way. And I know you can throw 20 pounds in the boat and 10 casts if you can just get on the right spot. And so. Uh, you just can't do that on the bank, and so that's, uh, I'm gonna spend my time out here the rest of the day and hopefully uh, call up three or four times. We've had a lot of rain here lately, and it's caused a lot of water to run, but it's also made the water come up. So we had some fish that got kind of shallow, which a lot of guys played on yesterday. I just, I'm not gonna fish shallow here. I spent too much time on this lake fishing offshore. I know what gets out here, and I know what you can do quickly. And uh, what you'll have is, is where a river ledge will make a little bend or have a little swag in it or something. That current kind of hits it directly. Those fish get down there. When the current hits something directly, it creates kind of a void and the water runs over the top of it and those fish will just stack right there and wait on bait to wash to them. And that's basically all you got here. I definitely want to, you know, plant my roots here. I love this lake. I go fish it every day when I'm home and I'm not going to a tour event. If, you know, I don't have anything just pressing. I, I, I get at least a couple hours in on the lake. I love trying to learn new stuff about it, learn how the fish act to certain conditions, certain water, how much current, color. I mean, it's, it's different every day, and there's always something new to be learned out here. And, you know, this lake's taught me a lot about just deep fishing in general and just offshore fishing in general that I've, you know, taken with me and fishing on the tour and things like that. The only thing that kept this tournament from being awesome was the water come up a little bit. I think it kept a lot of fish shallow. And, uh... Thank you, sir. We're getting closer. Nothing like having a three pounder stop you mid sentence. Justin Atkins, who's a rookie on the FLW tour this year, is stoked about being in his first TH Marine BFL All American, one of the most prestigious events in professional bass fishing. We'll find out who's going to make the cut when we come back. Don't go anywhere. TH Marine BFL All-American, brought to you by General Tire, anywhere is possible. BRP Evinrude, learn more at evinrude.com. You can get more from your oil with Quaker State. Costa Del Mar, see what's out there. Ranger Boats, 
still building legends one at a time. And by PowerPole, swift, silent, secure. Big? Yeah, I can't. Wrong kind of fish. <laughs> well, yeah. We'll stay on the eddy. That's a grown. Grown, yeah. Grown. Yesterday on that first place, the current was running pretty strong, but this morning there wasn't hardly any. And then it's picked up a little bit, but it's not much. I, I don't know. Maybe that's what caused them big ones to bite yesterday. I, I had three big ones by about nine o'clock yesterday. Two of them come from right here. Marshall Deacon's putting the pieces of the puzzle together as our coverage of the TH Marine BFL All-American continues. Deacons holds a sizable lead without filling his five bass limit. And at about the halfway point of this event, you can feel the pressure rising. I came and stayed a week before the cutoff, and I, I did a lot of looking, drafting, and I, I grafted over some, and I thought I could catch them. And I'd turn around, and I'd fish around a while, and I couldn't catch them. I didn't know what to do, because I'd never practice one day for a tournament before. And I was kind of worried about what to do. And instead of running around and graphing and trying to find big schools, I, I just went every place that I'd got a bite and, to see if I could get another bite. I found the places that they were on. I know a lot of guys, they spent their whole day grafting. They didn't fish any, they just rode around. Might be number five, huh? Fish number five. It can happen quickly on this lake, and Deacons can now start hunting for some upgrades. Jeremy Lawyer, the winner of this event last year, is also hunting as he seeks to fill out his limit. But the Missouri pro who fishes at the FLW tour level is getting little cooperation from these fish. I had 16 pounds yesterday, and, and that put me in 11th. And you know, I, I caught them on kind of a little bit of everything, you know, a couple of them on a football jig, and. A, crankbait, you know, and a spoon. It's just a typical Tennessee River type fishing. You know, they're out on the ledges. There's a lot of fish up on the bank, and there was definitely a lot of fish caught off the bank yesterday, and some guys are gonna make the cut fishing off the bank, but uh, the bigger stringers are definitely coming out deep and everything, and so uh, that's that's where it's gonna be all going down at as far as the guy that wins it. The pattern that we've got the last couple of days has just been stay on the move and hope you run into them, but eventually that pattern doesn't work on some days, so that's not the best advice. But. That's all a guy can do. This might work. I don't know, he's shrinking on me too. Not a giant, but every little bit helps. I got probably about 17 pounds, maybe just a little bit less. Got a couple fish that if I can catch a go on them, you know, be a good increased coal. And, uh, I got a few places I'm gonna fish on the way back. I won't need about 20 or 30 minutes to stop on them. So just kind of buying my time down here. Always in my day, I come back up the lake closer to McFarland. And I try to plan that around when the current is gonna start. I pay attention to buoys, just water running around the boat. If I'm drifting, things like that, to kind of plan my movement. I like to get on a hold probably, you know, 30 minutes after the water started and give the fish time to acclimate to it and get them set up correctly. The only problem is, you know, the water starts up here past the weigh-in and it starts down. So if I run all the way back up, you know, and started fishing and then work my way back down, I would eventually run out of gas before I could get back. So you kind of have to pick where you want the current to get to before, you know, you start making your venture back fishing holes that have had time to acclimate. Does help anything or not? He should. I think it's small mouse, the smallest one. It's time to see how the rest of the field finished out their afternoon and who will make the top 10 cut to fish the third and final day. 17 pounds and 13 ounces of bass with a Pickwick Lake Giant. Take a look at that. 15 pounds and 13 ounces that does jump you up into the top 10. Justin Atkins up here on the stage. 17 pounds, seven ounces, moves Justin into third place. I didn't catch a bass where I caught any yesterday. I just run new water and pulled up on a you know a hot school and called them and 
tomorrow we're going to strike out and run down the lake and get on what we can get on and catch what we can catch. Out of the choo-choo division, Jeff Knight, bud. 16 pounds, two ounces. You're sitting in second place. Brad Fowler on the boater side. Good limit, 18 pounds and seven ounces. Puts him into eighth place. Marshall Deacons, 20 pounds and 11 ounces. Puts Marshall Deacons at 45 pounds and one ounce for two days. It was tough today. I, I had uh, 15 pounds, I guess, fairly early. I couldn't get a big bite, and uh, I stopped on the place coming in, got two big bites, and that's what did it. Marshall Deacons has been fishing BFL events for over two decades, but this is his first trip to the All-American. And the Tennessee angler is making up for lost time as he continues to crush it here in Florence, Alabama. Can he keep the pedal down for one more day? We'll find out after a short break. Stay tuned. I gotta have 11 pounds to beat him. Where I'm fishing, I've lost two big fish the first day and lost two big fish yesterday. You know, if I can put two and two together, it'll be on like Donkey Kong. Last year I qualified and it was on Barkley, which I guide on Kentucky Lake and fish Barkley a lot. So I was really excited. A big article came out the night before the tournament. Uh, I, I was the favorite to win. And uh, my co-angers finished first and second, but I finished 20th. So uh, this year I just really wanted to make up for that. It was tough to get a bite yesterday until about two o'clock as the storm come through and it, it wind was blowing real hard and it seemed like the current was just rolling and that's when I caught my two biggest ones. I don't know, I just hope I can catch a limit. <laughs> Marshall Deacons has the mindset of someone who's still trying to figure these fish out. You wouldn't guess the man is leading the TH Marine BFL All-American by over nine pounds. Here's a look at the leaderboard as we start out our third and final day. Everyone else behind Deacons is actually bunched up pretty tight. It kind of feels like a clash for second, unless Deacon stumbles hard today. Boat number one this morning, Marshall Deacons and Alex Hester have a great day. Well, ain't no current, you can tell a big difference. When you get on your waypoint, just sit there. <laughs> Makes them fish finicky. My boat's sitting at 51 foot of water, and I'm throwing to probably 25, 26 foot, working it all the way out, and they're hitting it somewhere in between. I mean, when they hit it, you know it. There ain't no questions. But that deep water, I mean, it's just so hard to set the hook. I mean, get the hook set that deep. So you lose a lot of fish. Just need to get like a mouse trap and put on there so I clap on to them and hold on to them. <laughs> That's where the mega school was at. Sitting right here about 49 to 51 foot, throwing to 23 to 25 foot and bringing it down that ledge. I had a six and a four here yesterday. Tough, tough, tough. But good things come to those who wait. These are the hardest ledge fish I've ever fished for to catch. Finding them's easy, catching them very difficult. Brent Anderson knows what he's talking about. He has a lot of experience on Tennessee River fisheries, actually making his living as a guide on Kentucky Lake. And he's been okay. extremely consistent in this event. His approach to ledge fishing might be just a little different than the rest of the top 10. When I first started ledge fishing for schools, I would pull up, throw a crankbait, catch as many as I could, and when they when school cooled off, I would move on to, to another school. When you leave a school, you never know if you're gonna get another school. So I spend a lot more time on them and you know fish a lot more methodically. And I've actually changed my approach yeah. a lot. Uh, we're used to you through the biggest, fastest baits first. I've, I've reversed my rotation now where I'll start with with more subtle baits, uh, you know, that, that, that may not be as intrusive to the school because it can actually have negative effects on the school if you throw the wrong bait. I think it's gonna be number two. 
not the size we're looking for. You know, I think overtaking Mr. Dinkins, like I said, will have to have a bad day and then us will have a phenomenal day, but you can do it here. I mean, I've had 31 pound bags on this lake, so, uh, and I brought them in. It can be done, but he'd have to stumble. But I am definitely gunning for up to second place. I'd love first place for both of us, but, you know, I'm definitely gunning for second because he's only three pounds ahead of me right now. And on this lake, you can make that up in one bite. You know, so, and I know the places to look, so I, I'm really seriously, like I said, the worst you can do is to finish last, and that's where we are right now in 10th place. So all we can do is move up. So I will be swinging for the fence today. That's a good one. Yeah. We stopped here yesterday and had a, my co-anger had a five pounder on it, jumped at the boat there and came off, and, and I caught one that weighed nearly three pounds, but it didn't help and I had to go, I didn't get to fish it long. Marshall Deacons is not known for his ledge fishing skills. In fact, many of the anglers you talk to that know him, including his good friend FLW Tour Pro Alex Davis, point to his ability to catch bass with a frog as his preferred tactic. But what most everyone can agree on is he is really good at locating bass. And in tournament fishing, that is the most valuable skill to have. And Deacons has located some good ones this week. The big one. Yes, sir. What a relief. <laughs> First bite, and it's nine twelve. Oh, God. Whew. I think it's a five oh. pounder. Get a couple more like that and I'll be be better. We're just moving around out here, running up down the river trying to get on some stuff and the spot right here is just a little high spot runs up in the mouth of a creek. And they run water, it pulls water out of this creek and sets these fish up on this hump and I'm just gonna uh, they just kinda set up all around the top of it. There ain't no real one particular place where I know for sure I'm gonna catch one, so that's why I decided to pick this crankbait up and just kind of throw it all around the whole hump and see what we can't catch. I felt like the dots I was seeing down there were pretty good sized fish, you know, better sized fish than what I was catching and what I felt like was biting. And uh, this morning I just decided to put on a big bait. Um, I catch a lot of big fish on a Z-Boss 25, and I felt like there were some good ones on that area, so I kind of backed off and made a real long cast tail in the very first cast I threw out there, which is typical when you make a bait change if one's gonna bite. He normally bites in the first cast or two. Funny thing is, I don't think I've caught one for 930 yet this week. I don't I don't know if they're just starting to bite then, or just my whole selection hadn't been good till 930. I don't know. I got him. I got him. Watch out. If I can catch me four more like that today, you know, I mean, I'll, I won't be mad about that at all. I mean, that, I'll probably need more than that definitely to catch Deacons unless he just completely stumbles today. But one thing about it is I hadn't caught one all week on a crankbait and a little overcast this morning. I thought I might be able to trick one. So it's kind of a good sign to catch that good one on it. I may throw it a lot more today. And if I can only catch, you know, if I only get five or six bites on it with their big ones, that'll be what you're shooting for for sure. The lack of current has these contenders off to a slow start. But the day is just starting to heat up as we continue our coverage of the 34th edition of the TH Marine BFL All-American. Stay close, we'll be right back. Last day is all Americans, a dream to be here on my home lake. You know, yeah, just wanted to enjoy the day and catch a lot of fish. Making all the All-Americans are pretty much a pinnacle of the grassroots of bass fishing and to be here, 50 people make it. I'm just glad to be one of them. It's what it's all about. It's a, an awesome experience. I'm just so blessed to, to have been able to make it to three of them already and hope to make it to several more. Keep on growing.
Welcome back to the 2017 TH Marine BFL All-American. A quick check of the leaderboard shows everyone is still chasing the man who's making the most of his first appearance in this prestigious grassroots championship. One of those chasing Marshall Deacons is Brandon Gray, who has two in his live well so far today. It's just a big old flat out here, average depth, nine to 10 foot. These little patches of eel grass down there. Some of them's about the size of the boat or boat, two boats together, and some of them's about the size of a tabletop. And if you don't hit that grass, then you don't get bit, I mean, pretty much. But, and I'm just swimming this jig through here and just letting it load up through that grass. And as soon as it'll pop out, just let it work itself. As we take a look at the map on Pickwick Lake, you can see that Brandon Gray is fishing near Deacons around the Natchez Trace Bridge, while Justin Atkins and Jeff Knight are a bit further upriver, but all of them are working main lake ledges or flats with grass just off the main ledges. It's, it's a big old lake, you know, I mean, you can't learn it in a lifetime or less a week, so I just kind of put it all together. And this was the easiest thing for me to find, this grass, instead of looking out here on these ledges where there's a big... Yeah, it's a better fish. I, I don't know. Come down a week before cut off and spent some time. I spent a lot of yeah. time idling. I know it was going to be somewhat of a ledge bite. Uh, and it took me about three days to put what I thought was a good pattern together. And you just had to be patient and once It'd come through there, nothing, nothing, and all of a sudden it'd just start bumping through there, bumping through there, bumping through there, and as soon as it got out of there, you know, bam, he'd hit it, so. Intense bite, I love it, I love it, feel that, feel that bite, so. Little, barely, barely keep it. I didn't have enough places that I could go and catch a limit for sure. I just had two places, and both of them were had people on them this morning. And then I run back down to the bridge where I, I caught the most. When I fished around, I still didn't get a bite. The last two days, them, them rocks, it's our, the current would wash your jig up over them. And today I got hung in there two or three times and I, I never got hung. The other days right there, I guess the current kept it washing across it. And today there's not much current and that jig fall down in them rocks and get hung. I got in the rod box and got my drop shot out and uh, I pitched it over by one of them piers. My co-anger, he was dragging a worm most of the time or a brush hog and he caught them. I don't know how many he caught, but he caught them. You know, other than his five pounder at nine o'clock this morning, Deacons has really been sort of flustered. Making his switch to the drop shot could be adjustment he needs to maintain his lead. This week it seemed like I can only catch three or four fish off a hole before it kind of spokes them and you have to back off, let them kind of get reset back up, pull back in, catch three or four more. And so I made a lot of moves today because I felt like I was constantly behind someone. I would pull up to an area that I knew had a few fish and I'd fish and not get a bite. And that kind of told me that I wheeled in right after somebody else left, the fish haven't set up right. So I just kept moving today to try to, the more times I moved, the better my chances were I would hit a spot that the fish have set back up on, give me a chance to catch a few of them. That's a good one. Net. It worked a few times, you know, I would pull up on an area and catch three or four fish and then go on to the next when they weren't all keepers. But it kept me in focus of what the deal was, you know, with what was going on and kept me getting bit. And uh, that's, that's key. If you get out there and not getting bit, you get real relaxed. You start thinking about other things and, you know, you're not ready when you get that big bite. Freaking long and skinny. Justin Atkins moved to Florence, Alabama so he could learn the ledges of the Tennessee River. And that decision has paid off for him as he's fishing on the final day of his first TH Marine BFL All-American. He's got some ground to make up on Marshall Deacons, but he has enough time to make it happen. Stay tuned.
so it's not like I'm coming out here and you know pulling up on a place and catching three and a half pounders all day. So four pounders are, are critical. And I've had two a day every day. So, you know, I'd feel good about at least retaining my, my second place start. That obviously isn't gonna catch Marshall, but you have to crawl before you can walk, so. It's been an exciting tournament so far. We welcome you back to our coverage of the 2017 TH Marine BFL All-American. This is the 34th year of the All-American. It's an event filled with a rich history and the winner will get a slot into this year's Forest Wood Cup to go along with a cash prize of up to $125,000. I always fish to win, but when you have this kind of money on the line, you know, I didn't, I don't want to say I fished conservatively today, but I didn't really change anything. And you know, Kentucky Lake I know really well. And yeah. a lot of times I'll gamble, you know, break away from my practice gamble. But at the end of the day, I can go scratch up enough to survive and get, get a paycheck. But a lake like this, I don't know it that well. So I just kind of stuck to my guns and hopefully it's gonna work out. Number five, how long did it take us? Hey, 40 minutes ahead of schedule actually. Big, big one. Woo! God almighty, what a fish. 948. 948. The co-anglers who compete out of the back of the boat represent more than 30,000 anglers from around the country. <laughs> the hundreds of tournaments of the BFLs are the grassroots start for anyone looking to get a taste of competitive bass fishing. So whether you don't have a boat or are looking to find some new fishing buddies, the co-anglers side of the BFL is a great place to find out how you stack up against the best weekend anglers out there. The winner of this All-American on the co-angler side will earn $60,000. And that can be enough motivation all by itself. See that? We started here this morning. Jim caught a four pounder. It's just a, a creek channel feeds through here and right on the edge of that channel is just a little clump of grass. The one thing you'd never want to do was leave fish to go find fish, you know? I mean, because I knew the fish were there. I'd caught 30 some keepers the first day and probably 40 some yesterday. I know the fish are there. And this morning I could actually pull up there on top of that grass and I could see the fish arch there on top of it. They just would not bite, you know. I just had to keep telling myself to be patient, put the bait back in there. I tried a little bit of finesse stuff, still didn't happen. And then, like I said, as soon as we got a little bit of wind current, the lake started flowing a little bit, you know, they, they got active. Net. Five, it? Yeah, five babies. <laughs> Brandon is like so many anglers in this situation, happy to land this limit fish and ready to look for a bigger bite. Another angler who's one shy of the limit is Wisconsin's Mike Brigham. Fishing in his seventh All-American, Mike has been working a five inch jerky J across the ledges. Fishing on Pickwick this week seems really volatile. Um, there's a big difference between a two and a four pound bite. There's enough to go around, but it's hard. I can't figure out exactly how to differentiate the two, so I just gotta fish hard for eight hours and hope the big ones bite. But I need, I think we all probably need a little more practice. There's only four or five boats that have been consistent, so anything can happen. I have about five, or, five to 10 different holes up here that yes. can potentially be good, depending on how hot it's been and all that. With it not being real hot, some of my shallower holes are still going to be players. And uh, I came back up the river this afternoon, and uh, I found a school of fish about a month ago when the water was running real good. I didn't put the waypoint in my graph for this exact spot because I didn't think it'd be a player this week. So just trying to figure out where it was and um, start throwing a crankbait around, lining up, and got a bite, scooted up, and got another bite, and got another bite, and kind of triangulated where all the fish were at out there. And I just went to work on them. There he is. Oh. Uh, probably. I don't mind. I'm just worried about this. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I got going on right here. Mm. All right. 
got a fish, got somebody else's bottle, got everything going on. Alright, number four. Just got on one of my favorite holes on the whole lake, so we're uh, hoping we can make good out of it. Atkins is getting into his afternoon rotation, and as we leave for a quick break, you can see on our leaderboard that Marshall Deacons, even with a modest day so far, has not given up his lead. Will the schools fire up for Brent Anderson? He's in a position to make a surge. Find out what happens when we return. The TH Marine BFL All-American. Brought to you by celebrating 60 years of fish finding excellence, Lowrance. GoPro, this is your life. Be a hero. The world leader in off road innovation, Polaris Off Road Vehicles. Yeti, built for the wild. And by TH Marine from transom to trolling motor. I'm gonna fish here a few more minutes and I've got my limit. I'm just gonna go try to find another big one. I, I've got one in there that weighs nearly five pounds. If I can catch another five pounder or two, it'd be hard for them to catch me, I think. I knew if I could catch a pretty good limit, I, you know, I'd have it, because I, I, Saturday is tough. I, I didn't think anybody would catch a 23 or four pound bag on the last day, I don't know, it, it, may be, it may be close, I don't know. So close to winning the TH Marine BFL All-American, you can tell that Marshall Deacons is feeling the emotion swell. There's just a little time left on the water and for all our top 10 anglers, the knowledge that they put every effort into this event means that no matter how they finish, they can hold their heads high. We started out this morning not catching much, except my co-wagner here, he showed out. But uh, I kept fishing the jig and there wasn't getting a bite. And uh, I pulled out a drop shot. I had, I had one pretty good one and another one, and I pulled a drop shot out and finished my limit, but I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared somebody's beat me. Oh yeah. Good job. My. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's the most emotion we've seen out of Deacons. He's really been on pins and needles, not wanting to blow a huge lead he started the day with. <sighs> Meanwhile, another first timer to the All-American is Justin Atkins, who represents the younger blood coming into the sport. And he's had a pretty good day so far. Caught a little audible. Um, been fishing way down the lake, fishing deep all day, and it just has not panned out. Um, decided late this afternoon to start running a little current. So I came back up the lake, getting on some shallow bars that I like to fish, and just throwing a crankbait, trying to pick off any vulnerable fish that are possibly positioned right up on top of them with all this current and wind. And you know, ounces are everything in this game, especially on the last day. We gotta need to cull up a couple more pounds. Every pound's gonna be several thousand dollars, more than likely, as stacked as all these weights have been the last couple of days. That's a good one. I got a big one, I'll get the net. Big it? Maybe not, I don't know. I'll let you know. Nah. I don't know how big mine is either. Mine's a little, need a net? Nah, I got him. Mm, that's good. Every, every decision is like, Two or three thousand dollars. <laughs> this is, you know, a, an actual deep school here. So, uh, you know, I knew there was quality here because I caught some yesterday. I'm catching two and a half pounders on the scrounger, so I decided to try a big Bastrick swim bait. Yeah. Boom. These are big ones for me this week, so I'm 
tickled with as many of these as I can get. Four pounder. Brent Anderson may have found a school of big bass and he's got enough time to still make things happen. We'll have to wait and see as our coverage of the 2017 TH Marine BFL All-American continues right after these messages. There's their dad, I just gotta get their mama. I hate to say it, but I've thrown in the towel on trying to catch Marshall. I just wanna secure my second place at this point. Net. No! There it is. Boom! Two and a half pound upgrade, baby. Woo! Thank you, good Lord. <laughs> Marshall Dickens, I'm coming for you. I want to go away on my guess. I see what's happened, but I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared somebody's beat me. It's been a long three days on the water, but one of these co-anglers is gonna walk away with a check for $60,000 as they bring their fish to Waymaster, Chris Jones. He's got three today that go seven pounds and two ounces exactly. Nine pounds and 11 ounces. You got him by one ounce, wow. 14 pounds, four ounces, wow. It's your new leader, wow. To be crowned BFL All-American Co-Angler Champion, you need just eight pounds and eight ounces. A five bass limit for Alex Hester, worth 20 pounds and 14 ounces. Your champion is Alex Hester. The big one on the 9-2. How'd you catch that one? I caught that Carolina rigging a brush hog. She come up and jump on you? It did. Did your heart then? It stopped. <laughs> five today, 13 pounds, five ounces. The boaters take the stage, and one after another, they fall short of the 45 pound mark that Deegan's started the day with. The question is becoming, can anyone catch Marshall Deegan's? A five bass limit today for Brandon Gray of North Carolina, new leader. 13 pounds and six ounces. I'm gonna be sitting over there for a minute. <laughs> All right, Brandon, he's coming after you. Here we go, five today for Justin Atkins, new leader. 13 pounds and 12 ounces. Justin Atkins getting it done on this final day at the BFL All-American. He's from Kingston Springs, Tennessee. Let's hear it for Mr. Brent Anderson. You need 13 pounds and 10 ounces. 18 pounds and five ounces. You got the lead. I just kind of stuck with my game plan and kept running, you know, running the same stuff I've been running. And it took me a little longer today, but it worked out in the end to at least hold second place down for a little while. Let's hear it for your round one Fish leader, Mr. Marshall Deacons. Wow! be crowned the BFL All-American Champion to punch your ticket to this year's Mecca of All Championships, the Forest Wood Cup. You need just seven pounds and 11 ounces. Five today for Marshall Deacon's work. 15 pounds, five ounces. Your champion is Marshall Deacon's. Wow! 60 pounds and six ounces in three days on Pickwick Lake. He is your champion. He is going to the Forest Wood Cup. It's a $125,000 payday for Marshall Deacons. Yeah, I was real lucky today. I, I, I didn't think I was gonna catch but two today and I picked up a drop shot, finished my limit out and caught one that, and coal with it. And I never got another bite. The whole day. My co-angers caught them every day. 
he pulled a worm around or a brush hog, and I, I, I should have known to do that, but I had to stick with what got me there. Let's hear it for your champion, Marshall Deacons. This is his first BFL All-American, and he wins it.